my, 19M, girlfriend, 19F, is mad at me for having sex with a chick in cyberpunk. Yeah so she was in the room while I was playing cyberpunk and I went up to a chick and didn't realize that the lip icon meant you'd go have sex with them. I thought maybe it was for a quest or something. Anyway so it starts up a sex cut scene, which was very much obvious and crazy for a video game, and she looks at the TV and is like what the fuck are you doing? She storms out and leaves my apartment. Now she won't speak to me, so did I just screw up my relationship over a video game? Not to be a jerk, but I've played cyberpunk and there is no way you got all the way to the sex animation before you realized where things were headed. I guess it's a bit embarrassing, but no reason to lie to reddit about it. Also sounds like your gf is super insecure. You should talk to her about what's really going on here. Alternatively you can always just save yourself the trouble and move on. Either way I don't suggest lying if you do talk to her. I think he approached a joy toy, npc prostitute, which is why he probably was confused. If you're new to the game, it can be difficult to differentiate all the map icons, and the joy toy icons don't exactly explain stuff. Did you use a cyber condom? If not, then you should get tested for cyber STDs. Maybe he got a computer virus. In German we say a fear den Jeff Allen in Bruder. I'm, Skull, so sorry no advice. Maybe like many people in these comments she doesn't realize it's a single player game. Because I could understand being upset if you were having video game sex with like real people over the internet so maybe that's why she got so upset. Regardless she acted pretty immaturely and I would have a convo with her. Last night, my. 25F, boyfriend, 30 meters, called his dead ex-girlfriend his should be wife and the one he's supposed to be with to my face during a fight. R and I have been together for about a year and half. I'm his first girlfriend after losing his ex in a drunk driving accident. They were together for 3.5 years, she had a child from a previous relationship who he was extremely close with and basically raised, and in April 2018, they were in a single car accident together. She was driving his car, and she died on sight while R walked away without a scratch. The next day, his ex's mom told him that she would have him arrested if R came to see the kid again. 2.5 years later, he is one of four people and three bars being sued for her death. Wow op, why would you date somebody with that kind of baggage? His trauma being an issue never crossed my mind when we started talking. Honestly, he started working at my restaurant and I couldn't take my eyes off of him. I loved him from the second I saw him, and we started dating 2.5 weeks after we met in July 2019. He had flings with multiple girls between his ex's death and the beginning of our relationship. He never went to therapy after the accident, instead, he bought a one-way ticket to South America and traveled for six months and claims that fixed him. I believed him. When he talks about his ex and the kid, I try to be as sympathetic as possible. I'm currently in graduate school for clinical social work, so I understand trauma. I don't believe in shaming people for things that are out of their control. I even tolerated the 12 pictures all over his bedroom of them together for the first year plus of our relationship until he switched bedrooms and I asked him to reconsider hanging them back up. Honestly, I think he misses the kid more than her. I think that's why he's hung up on the relationship. He only cries when he talks about not being able to spend time with him anymore. He wanted to adopt him. Like I said, I was in love with R upon first sight. Our relationship has been pretty good. We're so freaking happy together 98% of the time. We spend every second we can with one another, constantly laughing, snuggling. We just enjoy each other's company. We also like to drink. With my starting grad school, I cut my alcohol consumption down a lot, but he didn't. We still drink every day, but I have a glass or two of wine compared to his multiple beers and old fashions. It's worse when he works, which is our biggest point of contention right now. R did a year of college at a community college and never cared to get his degree. He's a great bartender and has been working at a local dive bar where he makes bank. I don't try to shame him for not showing much passion or interest to do more with his life, 
but every time he goes to work over the past three months or so, he comes home drunk. Meaning he gets in his car and drives home drunk. After losing his ex in a drunk driving accident. Lately, when he's drunk, I can't stand him. I've explained multiple times that it bothers me. We spend a lot of time together so I know exactly how much alcohol it takes for him to get drunk, and it's a lot. I can hear it in his voice the second he's buzzed. When he calls me before leaving work, I always ask him how much he had to drink during his shift, and he lies. I usually don't sleep over on Sundays, but yesterday, we both worked long shifts at our different restaurants, and all day, he told me how much he missed me. I knew he was drunk when he called me before leaving, but I still met him at his house. About two hours after we got home, his intoxication started really pissing me off. I expressed this to him. His typical drunk response when I bring attention to something that's bothering me at night is telling me I'm wrong for feeling that way, gaslighting me, rolling over, and going to sleep. This infuriates me. And we've had multiple discussions about it. Last night, as he was doing that yet again, I said to him you said, X's name, got fired from, his current bar for getting too drunk on the job, right? I wonder how long it's gonna take until that happens to you. He loves this job. I wanted him to realize he was putting his job at risk with his drinking. You're crossing a line, op. He said. How? I responded. He's wasted at this point. And he only had a beer and half glass of wine since he got home. By talking shit about my dead girlfriend, the woman I should be with right now instead of you. At that point, I got up and started getting dressed to go home. R never refers to his ex as his ex, but his girlfriend. I've only addressed it once, and he told me he feels weird calling her his ex because they never actually broke up. To my knowledge, they broke up for four months the summer before she died. Their relationship wasn't perfect by any means, but none are I guess. I am your girlfriend. Ah uh, stop freaking calling her your girlfriend, it's been me for a year and a half now. I said, I may have to date you now, but she's my should be wife. You're not welcome here. Get out. I usually protest when he tells me to leave, but this broke me. It's never gonna be me, is it Ta? Uh? I asked. I really thought it was. I thought you could be my wife, but it's clear you can't be. I knew that this was coming from him being drunk, but I couldn't take it. I left his house and screamed, cried and prayed for God's strength to leave him as I drove home at 2 a.m. I haven't heard from him since. I don't want to talk to him today, but I want him to freaking care. I want him to apologize. I want him to come to therapy with me so we can discuss and get through our communication barriers. I want to marry a man who thinks I'm the love of his life. I don't want to live with the insecurity of thinking I'm his second choice when many of his friends have told me they're happy he got out of that relationship. I love him. It's not all bad. He gives me the world. He treats me like a queen. He bends over backwards for me and will literally do anything I ask him to, except communicate. It's not all bad. I love spending time with him and miss him whenever I'm not with him, so what do I do? I don't want to talk to him today or tomorrow or the next day honestly, but I don't even know if he's gonna remember what he said. I don't know what to do, how to address this, or get the message across to him that he really hurt me. I don't know if he meant what he said, but I feel like I'll never be able to get it out of my head. Is this relationship worth my time? I want to marry him and we talk about our future together all the time. I just don't know if I could spend a life with somebody who comes home wasted five nights a week and deals with unresolved trauma, who will essentially call me the backup plan whenever he wants to hurt me. Everything else about our relationship is perfect. I love him so free much. How do I get my point across that he hurt me? How do I get him to stop putting his life and our relationship at risk whenever he works? He's scheduled tonight and tomorrow morning, so I don't want to see him today, but I don't want to talk to him either. I'm scared he won't even try to reach out. I always crawl back to him the morning after our fights, but this time feels different. I understand that they would be married right now if she was alive. That's okay. He didn't know me. But as messed up as this is, I think everything happens for a reason. I don't know if I'm in his life to be a stepping stone, or if it should be us. I really thought we were meant to be. I just need help guys. I need words of encouragement and advice. I need to respect myself and my worth. Tia.
you shouldn't need to be repeating the phrase it's not all bad like a mantra. Clearly, a good bit of it is bad. 1. He's an alcoholic, who is constantly driving inebriated when his ex literally died from it. 2. He's not healed from the emotional trauma of losing her and their kid. He needs therapy and rehab. 3. He isn't treating you like a queen. He's using you and alcohol so he doesn't have to face his grief and problems. Until he does the work on himself, where can this relationship go? He's basically come right out and told you your second best. If you can live with this, it'll be up to you to move on, whether you point out that he hurt you or not. His mindset isn't going to change. You realize, using this type of language during an argument is unhealthy and emotionally abusive, right? It's a sign of things to come. WTF are you doing? That guy is clearly an alcoholic that's hung up on his dead GF. And, he tells you as much. You don't even have to second guess how he feels. He told you, you're going to ruin your life with that guy. Why don't you go to therapy by yourself and try to figure out why you have what seems to be an ear obsessive need to fix people. He's not going to change. Not for you or anyone else. He's still driving drunk after losing the woman he should be married to right now in a drunk driving collision. If he didn't learn anything from that, he's just not gonna. This really infuriates me because you're about to be a LCSW yet you don't know you're a mandated reporter for when people drive drunk and put others in danger. How do you sleep at night knowing he could kill someone any second when he drives drunk? If he doesn't you know this and don't do anything, your license is on the line. Yet you speak about this so nonchalantly, it's disgusting. You both need to be in AA. But my relationship to this great guy who is a dangerous alcoholic putting other people's lives at risk, but he treats her like a queen. So not a problem. I need to respect myself and my worth. Yes, you do. You are dating an alcoholic who is drowning in grief, drives drunk five days a week, and sees you as second to the dead girlfriend. Why would you want a future like that? If his life isn't torn apart by the fact that he's likely to be held partly responsible for killing his girlfriend, it's going to be torn apart when he gets caught leaving work. Or worse, he could kill himself or someone else. You're never going to be good enough for him. No one is until he deals with his grief, which will require him to address his alcoholism. Care about yourself enough to let him go. I, F46, want to tell my husband, M52, that I want a divorce this week. It's almost Christmas. Is this cruel, no kids involved? After a few years of trying to get through to him that his lack of emotional openness and lack of physical intimacy, I have decided that he can't or won't change. I can't live like this. I could put this off until after Christmas, but he already has cataract surgery scheduled for the end of January. I'm happy to still help him out with things like that, but I can't stay married. I just feel like if not Christmas, there would always be the next event like surgery, that I wouldn't want to ruin. I can't keep putting it off. We don't have children, but we are both more separated from our extended families than we normally would be because of COVID. Like I said, I don't hate him and I would still spend Christmas with him. If he wants that, I just don't see how it helps either of us to keep putting it off. Edit, yes, we've had countless conversations about the issues in our relationship on both sides. He won't go to therapy either with me or by himself. I've been in therapy to fix my own issues. I know I'm not perfect. As for commitment, I used to feel really guilty to think about breaking it. Either of us come from divorced families and we didn't take marriage lightly. But he made a commitment too, and I don't feel like he's keeping it. Update, I did talk to him in a more serious tone than I ever have before. He was upset. Didn't mention how could you do this at Christmas. But he agreed to go to therapy to work on some things that he's known about for a while. So I will see how things go, and he knows where my mind is. 